Bristol Community College, Mathematics with Dan Avedikian, Math 132, Calculus with Applications, Section 10.1, Problem 7. This is Section 10.1, Problem 7. It says consider the function f of x equals x plus 2 over x minus 6, and then it asks four questions about that function. The first question is, is 2 comma 3 a point on the graph of the function? And they're basically asking, if you put in a 2, do you get out a 3? I mean, if we had the graph of the function, you could just look at the graph and determine, but you're not given the graph of the function. So um, with some math, you can see if you put in a, a 2, do you get out a 3, or do you get out something else? So take the function that's given, which is f of x equals x plus 2 over x minus 6, and put in a value of 2 for x. So the x plus 2 on top would become 2 plus 2. The x minus 6 underneath would be 2 minus 6. And now in the numerator, 2 plus 2 is 4. In the denominator, 2 minus 6 is negative 4. I can reduce that to minus 1. But the thing is, I do not get out a 3. If I put in a 2, I get out a negative 1. So the point over 2 down 1, or 2 negative 1 is a point on the graph, but 2 comma 3 is not a point on the graph. So the answer to part A of this question is no. 2, 3 is not a point on the graph. B, it says if x is 2, what is f of x? Which is asking you if you put in a 2, what do you get out? Well, actually, the answer part A, we had figured out if we put in a 2, we get out a negative 1. So there's no need to do the work over again. We just did it a minute ago. Part C says if f of x is 2, what is x? Now this sounds a lot like part B, but it's different. It's asking if you got out a 2, what did you put in? Or you could also say instead of f of x is 2, if y is 2, what is x? Um, if you could see the graph, if the graph of the function were given, you could just look at the graph and read it off the graph. But it's not given. The function is given as an equation. So we have a couple of options. We could just try a variety of inputs with a certain amount of trial and error. You could probably see what you would have to put in to get out a 2 in maybe 10, 15 minutes. You could get it. It wouldn't be awful, but you can get it much quicker if you use a little bit of algebra. So take the function that's given, f of x equals x plus 2 over x minus 6. And so for some value of x, what's going to happen is x plus 2 over x minus 6 is going to give you a result of 2. There's a value of x that will make that equation true. Now again, you could guess at it, but what I would like to do is solve it. And what makes the equation I have difficult to solve is the fact that it has a denominator. You have an x minus 6 in the denominator on the left side of this equation. I can fix that. This is an equation. I can do anything I want as long as I do the same thing on both sides. So multiplying both sides by the value of the denominator, x minus 6, is certainly a legal move. So what I'm going to do, let me move over a little bit to the Right, if I do x minus 6 times the left side of the equation, and that will be equal to x minus 6 times the right side of the equation. I'm multiplying an equation by the same thing on both sides. And on the left, what I have is x minus 6 times some stuff over x minus 6. The x minus 6's will cancel, leaving me with x plus 2 on the left side of my equation. And on the right side of the equation, I have 2 times, in parentheses, x minus 6. So I clear the parentheses. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. And now, by canceling the denominator, the equation looks much easier to deal with. I have an equation. There's only one unknown. I can group the unknowns on one side, the numbers on the other, and, and solve. So let me first take this an x on the left side of the equation, subtract x from both sides. Basically, it's going to pull the x over to the right side. It's going to become a negative x. I'm going to combine it with the positive 2x that's already there. So negative x, positive 2x. I have an x by itself on one side of the equation. It's on the right side. It doesn't matter what side. Um, and then on the right side of my equation, I have a negative 12. I'd like to cancel on the right. So 
I'm going to add 12 to both sides, or you can think of it as I'm going to pull the 12 that's on the right side of the equation over to the left. It'll become a positive 12. I'm going to combine it with a positive 2 that's already there, and that'll tell me that x is 14. So if I did the math right, in order to get out a 2, I must have put in a 14. And what's nice about this type of math is you can check it. So I have the original function written all underneath part C here. Let's put in a 14 and see if we get out a 2. And, and, and you'll know for sure if it's right. So the f of x will become f of 14. The x plus 2 on top will become 14 plus 2. The x minus 6 in the denominator will become 14 minus 6. And in the top of that fraction, 14 plus 2 is 16. In the bottom of the fraction, 14 minus 6 is 8. 16 over 8, sure enough, it reduces to 2. So if I got out a 2, I must have put in a 14. So the answer to part C is 14. And again, you'd eventually get that with some trial and error, but this is the more mathematical way, and, it, and it's quicker, too. And finally, part D is what is the domain of the function? And again, by domain, what the question is asking is what can you use as an input value? What can you put in for x? And when you have a function that's given to you in the form of an equation, what you want to check is you want to eliminate any values that you might use as an input value that will zero out a denominator or put a negative under a square root or really a root of any even index. I typically say square root in class. This function has no root of any kind in it, so I don't have to worry about that part. But I do have a denominator. I have an x minus 6 in the denominator. I cannot allow that to be 0. The numerator can be 0. That's fine. Cannot allow the denominator to ever be 0. So if my denominator is x minus 6, the value that's going to get me in trouble is 6. If I put in a 6, the bottom of my function is going to be 6 minus 6. I'll have a 0 in the denominator. So the answer to what is the domain of this function it's all numbers. Except 6, or positive 6. I can actually put in a negative 6. That's fine. I can put in a 0. I can, the only thing I can't put in is a 6.